Welcome to the Secrets of Confident Women podcast, where you'll learn all the best tips, tricks, and practical techniques for building the confidence levels you've always wanted. With inspiring interviews, real-life examples, and game-changing insights, this podcast is for women who know that mastering the skill of confidence is one of the most important things they'll ever do. Well, hello, and welcome to episode number three. And hello, Anastasia. Hey. So good to have you on the podcast today. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. I love doing these podcasts together. I know. They're so much fun. Okay. So today we are going to be discussing how to stop the negative thoughts from ruining your life. Awesome. And we are so happy to be talking about this topic. And you know what? It really was one that we knew we'd need to address in the early episodes of these of our podcast because you know what? It's a challenge that we know everyone has to deal with. And in my coaching and working with many women and you know what? Even discussions with friends or my kids and other women I meet through presentations, I know that this is one of the main topics that arise. And I think because at some level, we all know how destructive these negative thoughts really can be. Yeah. But I'm often surprised at how many people don't realize that they have control over this negative voice. I think at some point, the voice seems to be our voice and we, you know, seem to think it is what is real. But today we want to talk about ways you can get control over what that voice says. You see, our brains are automatically wired to think the worst. So negative thoughts come easily and often to all of us. And there has been so much neuroscience research over the years that has explained why this happens and why it's totally normal for all of us to have these negative thoughts. Our brains are designed to keep us safe. I'm sure you've heard that before. So, so many times. negative thoughts actually work well to kickstart our defense mechanism and ensure our safety. And at certain times, those thoughts are great because they keep us from dangerous things. But that is not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the negative thoughts that stop you from doing what you want to do and living the life that you really want to live. And you know what? I work with clients all the time on this because this actually forms the basis from which they need to build their confidence. And you can boost your confidence by interrupting the automatic negative thoughts in your head. You see, look, you actually have about 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day. Oh and God, that's research, so many. oh, I know. And so re- many. Research tells us that. About 90% of those are the same thought that you had the day before, right? Now, imagine if a whole bunch of those thoughts were negative because that's what we do, right? We flood our brain with negative thoughts all the time. So how can we expect to change our lives and be happier and more confident if we don't specifically work on changing these negative thoughts, How can we expect to have a positive and successful life if the vast majority of thoughts in our head every day are negative? It just doesn't work that way. You see, it's this process that we need to disrupt. If you want to stop negative thoughts from controlling and ruining your life, and this is what we're going to be addressing today. Great. I I just think it's so important. It's such an important thing for women, but really everyone. I mean, men suffer from it, children, everyone, because it really can affect every element of your life. That little voice that we've got in our head, just constantly throwing negativity and pessimism at us. Mm -hmm. Um, And we need to do something to change it. There's no way around it. So to start with, I think what we, what is most important is we need to become really clear on the process itself, what we're doing to change it. Um, And we need to become aware of the fact that it is just a thought. You need to identify what you're thinking as just a thought. It's not the truth. It's actually never really the truth until you make it true. Yeah, that's right. It's a thought and only a thought of, you know, of which you have hundreds of a day. And that thought has no power until you believe it. Then it becomes the truth for you. It doesn't mean it's the truth. It's just that it becomes at that point the truth for you because you have moved it from a thought to a belief. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, when you think about it that way, you realize how this process works. And for our brains, it's just automated, right? We do it all the time. We have this negative thought. We don't even recognize it as a thought. It just is automatically a belief for us. Um, 
I think what we need to do in order to start shifting that that process though is once you've established and you've identified it as just a thought you need to start questioning the purpose of the thought right so we now know that it's not the truth it's just something that we believe um and it is just a thought so we need to start asking ourselves why are we having this thought Mm. is it helpful is it powerful is it supportive for how we want to show up in life is it helping us you know move us forward um, I know, Jodie, you've dealt with this so often and you've seen it come up with so many women, especially the women that you coach and the women in our confidence course. We see it in our um, private group all the time yeah. um, that they're constantly having these thoughts that are, are bringing them down. Mm-hmm. Um, so how do we deal with this? How do you deal with this with the women who are having serious issues with these constant negative thoughts? Well, I guess the first first start, I, I tell them that you just can't perform in a positive way with a whole bunch of negative thoughts running around unchecked in your head. And that's literally what's happening. They're just unchecked thoughts. It's yeah. just automated. When you mindlessly believe the spontaneous negative thoughts that pop into your head thousands of times a day, then you create like a snowball effect where your brain is just going to buy into the BS you're telling yourself because that's all you hear. And what happens is you start to believe these thoughts are the truth, but they're not. They're just thoughts. They are not the truth. And everybody has them. But the difference is the people who are confident and successful in life, they just don't believe them. They recognize that these negative thoughts do not support them in achieving what they want. So they make a conscious effort to change these thoughts. Look, put it this way. Negative thoughts aren't true. They're just thoughts until you believe them, right? Fair enough. But positive thoughts aren't true either. They're just thoughts until you believe them. But which set of thoughts is going to give you the happy and successful and confident and amazing life you want? Positive ones is the only ones, of course, right? So it's this is where it becomes your choice to literally choose the thoughts that are going to make your life work and not just allow your brain to believe the negative ones. You know, I've, I always find it funny. People say, oh, you know, Jodie, I don't believe all that positive thinking crap and I think to myself well just stay with the negative yeah, and yeah. see how's how that's, that working out for you <laughs> how's that, how's it, like it just makes no sense to me no, not to believe in how positive thinking can why make, would you choose to be negative I, all the time I don't know. it doesn't make sense I just don't know Dal. you know what even at the moment like I've really picked myself up I don't know if you can relate to this but Recently, you know, there's been so much going on and so much on Facebook about 2020 has just been so terrible, you know, look, which it has for many people, like it has been a real, there's been so much change, so much fear, so much going on for 2020. Um, But I've been buying in and, and agreeing with everybody about, oh, I just can't wait for 2020 to be over and we're only you know, halfway through. Let's just start. Well, I know, but everyone's <laughs> like, let's just write 2020 off and start again. You know what? But buying into that thought, is that setting – I'd like really question, is that setting me up for a really great second half to the year? Probably not. <laughs> oh, no. no. No, you've already written of it off, right? Of course not. It's like gone. I'm like, let's just, you know, so I've really stopped. I've really stopped doing that. Yeah, it's a bit like that quote, that one that we love, where it says, giving up on your goal because of a setback is like slashing your other three tires because you got a flat. I mean, it just sounds ridiculous. Oh, and I I've love always that quote. loved it. I know. Because <laughs> um, it's one of those penny dropping moments. You go, all right, I got a flat. That's pretty crap. But you're not going to slash your other three tires no. because of an obstacle. I mean, why would you ever ruin your chances of success and happiness? with negativity and powerlessness just based on past experiences or negative thoughts. Like if you want it to get better, you need to make a conscious effort and your thoughts work exactly the same way as the tires. If you set yourself up for misery and negativity, then that's really all you're going to create for yourself every time. Yeah, for sure. So just don't do it. Like I know it sounds simple, but just don't do it. You, You need to make that conscious choice. You need to stop letting those terrible, debilitating, disempowering thoughts control you and Unfortunately, no one else can do it for you. No. It doesn't matter what we tell you. We can keep telling you to have positive thoughts. If you don't make that conscious choice for yourself, it's never going to change. No. Um, So back to the technique we've been talking about where we ask ourselves this question, right? Yeah. Is this thought helpful for me or what I want to achieve? What what, is this thought helpful for what I want, 
or how I want to move forward in my life? So you ask yourself this question and the answer sadly is sometimes no. Mm, So where to from there? No, no. (laughs) So what do we do then? Well, then you ask yourself what would be a better thought? Like, you know, what would a more helpful thought be? Like you actually have to consciously choose to, you know, think a better thought. Don't let these just run. So, for example, let's say like you really want to speak up about something at a meeting or in a team thing or, um, you know, but you've, you're having this thought that no one wants to hear what you have to say or someone else will probably say this anyway or better than me or whatever. And I've had clients that just really stop themselves from speaking up at work because they just sort of think, well, nobody wants to hear what I have to say. But so we, what we want to do is try changing that thought to become something that's more empowering. So, you know, maybe it's like no one can say it the way I say it or, you know, my perspective is unique and, it, you know, it might be helpful to someone what I have to say. It helps for social too though, doesn't it? Oh, it's not just sure. a workplace thing. Because yeah. Sometimes you want to speak up in a social environment if you see that there's an injustice or there, there's yeah, something that sure. you want to stand up about and you just go, oh, no, 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 I'll be shut down or no one really wants to hear this. And if you reframe the way you put that question and go, oh, maybe someone does want to hear this, yeah. it, it gives more power to that thought, I think. Well, it lets you step into a completely different behaviour. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what we're trying to do, change the behaviour, change what you're, what you're already doing to make, make it more powerful. Yeah. You know, I say to people that um, when I'm like preparing for a presentation, I prepare my headspace as much as I do the content of their presentation. Like it's no good me preparing – you know, content and slides or whatever, you know, whatever it is for the presentation. If yeah. my mindset is in a negative or powerless place, like that that presentation is not going to go well, regardless of how, how great my content might be. I have to have my head in the, in the game. I have to be thinking positive. I have to put actual work into making, you know, stepping onto that stage going, look, I'm going to give a really great presentation presentation I'm gonna you know give content that changes people I'm gonna be there for the I'm gonna really listen and and listen to questions and really make an effort to to you know give the best presentation I can now no if one I else was, is gonna believe it right well, if you don't believe it yourself how right. are you gonna make other people but believe what you're saying if I'm walking on stage going oh my god this is gonna be terrible or nobody wants to hear what I've got to say like I've already lost the battle <laughs> it's just not gonna go well it's just not, not gonna go well right so it is about preparing and this is the work that you need to put in to, you know, lots of steps in life. Look, at the moment I've got this client, she makes sales calls and we talked about um, the thoughts that she has before she, she makes that sales call and we identified that the thought that she was telling herself was that she's going to interrupt that person, right? So she's picking up the phone, she's going to interrupt them, that they don't want to hear from her and that she has this thing that she's wasting people's time, right? So, I mean, you know, she never actually says this out loud until like we started talking about it in the in the coaching. But the thoughts that run through her head constantly, this is what she talks tells herself before and even after and during during sales calls that she's interrupting this person and nobody wants to, you know, that she's wasting people's time. So... You know, even that those thoughts are not being voiced, they are running rampant and unchecked in her mind and putting her into a negative and like literally unhelpful headspace before she's even dialed a number. You're almost like, better off not picking up the well, phone. Well, exactly. Who is, she, that who is she showing up as to her clients and customers yep. with those thoughts in her head? And I'll tell you, it's just not a helpful position to be in it's not powerful she's not coming across as a powerful woman but she's already someone who's feeling defeated and useless now you know not even using the actual words out loud doesn't make a difference if they're in your head and you're believing them they will be communicated to the outside world in one way or another through you know maybe the volume of or tone of your voice the the body language you use your actions or your movements we just see like, that all the time don't we yeah, someone for could sure. say something but there's no conviction behind no. it and you just go how do you expect me to believe that if i can see yeah. from your body language yeah. and everything about you that you don't actually believe it yourself no. and i'm sure that's got something to do with what's going on in their head while oh, they're talking sure. to you absolutely and that's where that lack of um 
it's not credibility. What is that word? It's um, like authenticity. Yeah. It's like the authenticity comes from you believing it. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And that's just yeah. not, you know, if that's not there because you've got, you've allowed these negative thoughts to run completely unchecked in your head, then, People you know, will see it. what chance do you have? Yeah. Look, the only way to stop communicating, back to confidence, the only way to stop communicating your lack of confidence is to stop thinking about it. Right, mm-hmm. because instead you need to make that conscious effort to change the thought to something that is helpful, powerful, positive of what you are doing. So imagine, like going back to my sales call client, imagine how different her sales calls would be if the thoughts running through her head, and this is some stuff we we worked on, were you know saying like I'm committed to offering exceptional customer service and I'm going to call that person back that was interested in my product or maybe it's I'm going to give this my absolute best shot regardless of what the outcome by you know might be you can tell from the outset that this type of call would be so much more effective yeah. than you know if she was in exactly the right frame of mind to communicate with a potential customer in with those you know, with those thoughts instead of I'm interrupting them and yeah, nobody totally. wants to hear from me. Like- totally. Oh, look, I hear you. I have had the same experiences in my life, not with sales calls. Um, I had it in the past with like my sense of direction, which I still do to myself because I just go, <laughs> oh, I don't know where I'm going. I never know where I'm going. Everybody who knows me knows that I never know where I'm going. Um, you always get there though, don't I you? I do, right? I've never actually gotten <laughs> lost. I always, so I actually do know where I'm going. I need to stop telling myself that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I always, I have this, I've had this other negative thought through my head around my relationship to technology that I just don't get it. It was my term that I was technologically challenged. I always told myself it was just too hard. I couldn't figure it out. Um, you know, technology just makes things more complicated oh anyway. God. So who needs I've it? I've heard this so many times from you. Right? And it's 2020, st- so yeah, I need <laughs> to pick up the pace. You do, doll. Uh, but as long as I was thinking this way, I just couldn't figure it out. It really was. Everything was really hard. And it did complicate things for me because I'd, start from a place of I can't do sorry I can't do this yeah. my my head was just going no nah, too hard can't do it too complicated um, and then I just realized I was shooting myself in the foot so I yeah. decided I had to change my thoughts around this and oh my god did it make a difference to the world like to my world I uh, we Jody and I work now on you know back end of websites something mm. that I never thought I'd say in a mm. sentence <laughs> <laughs> Because technology just doesn't scare me anymore. I, someone once said to me, oh, look at you. anything that you do on a computer, you can undo. I'm like, what? Oh, can you really? And they're like, so yeah, good. yeah. And I just never realized this was the truth. And then I started to use that kind of mindset. And then every time I'd have an automatic negative thought about how technology was literally ruining my life and why I hated it so much, I, I had to start making a conscious effort to change my thoughts around it instantly. Yeah. So I would literally just go, Anastasia, stop it. Yeah. Right. This is not helping you. You'll figure it out. You'll be fine. Just keep trying. You've got this. Yeah. And I would have to talk myself out of my negative thoughts. I'd, I'd ridicule them yeah. and I'd recognize them for what they were. They were just thoughts. They were never actually the truth. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how one sentence said by someone, like you said, you know, yeah. anything you can do on a computer can be undone. Yep. Changed um, everything. Changed like just completely that one that fear that I had, yes. That new thought. And that's what happens when, we, you know, I do coaching. It's like giving people, helping them to think things in a completely new way that they didn't have access to before, which yeah. changes the game. Yeah, that changed totally. the game for you, you know. It really did. Oh, look, and I promise you, I make these changes constantly. At any time an area of my life isn't working or I don't feel positive about it, I check in on the thoughts that I'm having. And usually that means a change needs to happen. And listen, look, I'll tell you, it does take work. You have to be constantly on a search and destroy mission. But you know what? I like that. So does everybody else. That's cool. It is. You just have to. It's like taking an AK-47 to a negative thought. It's just you have to be, this is a constant game. This is not, oh, you find that one negative thought and destroy it and then the rest of your life works. This is This goes on constantly. This is like the game for life that you need. But you know, why not play this game? Uh, this is the best it's game. better than the alternative. Better than the alternative, right? And you know what? One of the biggest aha moments that many of my clients get is when they realize that there is nothing wrong with them because they think this way or that they have these thoughts. The only problem I tell them, and I go, you know, they get it. 
everyone's having these negative thoughts. The only problem is that they've believed them right. and they didn't make an effort to change them or, you know, change it or find a, a nicer thought maybe to live with. Like yeah. they just didn't put the effort in. And that's the only, that is the only different. You know what, Dal? You know, as I've mentioned to you a few times, I've had clients whose main repetitive thought is that they're hopeless, they're a loser, they're a failure or a disappointment, or they say, you know, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, or I'm not skilled enough. I mean, there is no way you can have a great life if you are constantly thinking this way. Yeah, It's just absolutely crucial that these thoughts are changed and I don't care if you've been thinking these thoughts for two weeks or two decades and unfortunately sometimes it's bloody four decades but you must put in the work to change those thoughts you know I find it so funny we put so much energy into our bodies doing fitness and eating right and cooking the right meals and trying to stay healthy and that's good right that is that's great but what is missed and sometimes that they I find people don't get that the same amount of work and to be honest if not more needs to go into keeping your brain and your thoughts healthy yeah like it just makes sense that this is the only way to not allow negative thoughts to ruin your life is to just keep control and and work on this daily and put the work in just like you're heading to the gym just like you're putting it in the work for healthy food you have to keep these you have to keep your mental brain in a healthy state and that is constantly changing it to you know have more positive thoughts and yeah again keep the go, negative ones in check. go on your search and destroy mission I all love the that. time yeah I had a client just recently and I made her email me every day and she had to write out the negative thought that she was having. And then she had to write underneath that. And I know that this thought is not true. And then she had to change it to a more powerful thought, right? Underneath. So every day she had to write out a a, a negative thought. She realized, you know, she was probably having more than one for sure, but the main negative thought she was, she was having. And then, you know, this is not, and I know this is not true. And then she had to consciously change it to a more powerful statement underneath. And this was great because she literally had to stop and recognize the thoughts that she had and consciously change it. And it made such a difference, especially when you see these thoughts written down in front of you. Sometimes you see how ridiculous they actually are. Yeah. I, I look, I, you know, I'm a pen and paper kind of girl. And yes. I write stuff down all the time. <laughs> and there is real power in that. I, oh, my I, God. Such- you know, I, I can still sometimes find myself saying it out loud or typing it in a message or an email. I'm technologically challenged. And then I see it written down and I get really annoyed with myself. Yeah. I just go, stop it. Why do you do that to yourself? And, you know, I, I'll, I'll get something wrong and I'll type it to someone. And then when I read it back, I go, no, you're not. No. You've got this. And, but it's really confronting to see it in writing. So, um it's a good technique because it allows you to challenge yourself and then you have the opportunity to change that thought instantly. So then I can literally go back and delete what I've written and, yeah. and in the same way I kind of erase the paper trail of the thought too, right? Yeah. So I've I've written it down and then I just go, no, that's not true. So by deleting what I've written, I'm deleting what I've thought as well and it makes such a big difference. I mean, we really do need to be more conscious when we do this to ourselves um, because the negative thoughts really can have a horrible impact on your life. And it's such a shame because nobody should be in that place. No. Really. And it's it becomes automatic. Like this, yeah. I'm hopeless and, you know, a failure, a dis- all these words. Like it just, it's it's painful to see. Yeah. Um, it's painful to, to watch women do this to themselves. Capable, competent, smart, oh my God. intelligent, beautiful they're so, women. They're such amazing women and they're just, they're, they're caught up in this, I call it sometimes like like the mouse wheel, like they're just, yeah, yeah. right, it's going round and round and round and round and they don't know how to stop that thought. They don't know how to just like put that like stick in the wheel. Yeah, yeah, thing, and fling themselves out in of the it. wheel <laughs> and just stop it from going round. But it mm-hmm. is, it's this is where the work comes in because if you if you don't, that thought just runs, as, a, you know, as we've talked about, 50,000 times a day. And if it's unchecked and just let go, it will run. It's yep. going to just run its own race. So and like is- you said earlier, you cannot have a positive life 
if you keep running the same negative race, right? No. It just won't happen. It, it's, I mean, it sounds simplistic, but it's the truth. If you keep having the same negative thoughts, nothing positive will come of that. No. But if you shift your sh- thoughts to be positive. Or it's fleeting. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have a fleeting moment of, oh, my God, life is awesome and it's gone And then again. it's gone. It's yeah. gone again. And it's not sustainable. Because the neural pathway you've created is... I'm hopeless, I'm hopeless, I'm hopeless, yep. I'm ho- or I'm not enough, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. Like Not smart enough, not thin oh, enough, not there's capable enough. There's so many enough. not enough. Yeah, so many not we enough. We do it to ourselves all the time. But, you know, we have to – it is work, and I'm not going to lie. I work on – and this, you know, as you know, a lot of times you've heard this story. This is one of the ways that this business was actually started because hmm. people would say to me, oh, you're so lucky to be confident, and but – you know, it's not luck, as no. you know. It's damn hard work. You have to put in the hard work. It's but the rewards are totally worth it. Totally it worth it. It does change your life. It, it really does. does. But what life do you want to have? Like I said before, negative thoughts aren't true. Positive thoughts aren't true. Only the ones you believe are true. Which ones would you choose? Right. It makes no sense to just. Uh, the only thing is that the negative thoughts come easy, because it, our brain's primed to believe them. That's right. But. I mean, we're, we are at an advantage now because we know this. We know neuroscience has taught us. We yeah. know this. The negative thoughts are easier to believe. Um, but it doesn't make them no-brainers. No. It just means you need to step in and go, yep, I understand that you're at the front of my mind, but I choose not to believe you. Yeah. And it, it really is a choice. I'm sure you – I mean, I have thoughts in my head all the time and some can never yeah. pass my lips. Right? <laughs> Well, this is the thing, right? We'd never say them out loud. No. You'd never say it to a friend. You'd never admit it to someone. No. But we find it okay to say it to ourselves. It's awful. No. And they're the ones that we just, it's putting in the work. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure this will come up on the podcast again because yeah. this is such, you know, in everything we do, it's the thoughts and the, the techniques is based on, you know, changing our thoughts process and all this sort of stuff. So, um, look, it'll come up again. It's such a huge topic. And, um, but look, for now and for today's podcast, I just really hope that you get as a takeaway from today that the importance of not believing the automatic thoughts in your head. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and just you look, if to make sure that you don't miss any more Confidence Secrets, we've got so many coming up related to this topic and a whole lot of other topics. There are things that lead off the back of this, things like fear and self-doubt. There's so much great stuff coming. Yeah. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe. Head over to risewomen.com if you want to check out other ways that we can help you increase your confidence. There's so much good stuff there. There's so much good stuff. Yeah. And remember, with confidence, anything is possible. Yes, it is. Can't wait to have you on the podcast next time. Bye, everyone. See you later.